The K Tell Story. Presenting a story so fast, so simple, so amazing, you'll wonder how you ever lived without it. As seen on TV, the K Tell Story. How many times has this happened to you? You're raised dirt poor as a kid on the farm, and then through fate, hard work, and a little moxie, you're running a huge international conglomerate, teeming with staff, selling millions of records and kitchen doodads. Wouldn't it be great if it could go on like this forever? Introducing KTEL, a company so successful, so audacious, it sliced the competition, it diced the pretenders, and inspired a legion of pitch men so slick and cunning, you need a shower after watching their advertisement. So delicious. From kitchen gadgets to disco records to personal grooming and everything in between, KTEL has been the music and gadget master of choice for over 40 years. Learn how it all began. See how it all fell apart. Be astounded as they recover from disaster. The story of KTEL International, on now and only one hour long, makes a great gift. If there were a gadget graveyard, a place where bits of broken plastic and unfulfilled promise went to die, then surely it would be littered with the kitsch that KTEL once peddled. KTEL knitter. KTEL, for anyone too young to remember, or those who spent the 70s without electricity, was one of the largest, loudest, and most successful marketing companies the world would ever know. Makes an ideal gift for fishermen of all ages. The amazing miracle brush mat Based in Winnipeg, KTEL would eventually conquer the world by bombarding consumers with a wave of TV and radio commercials so annoying, so bombastic, and so often that resistance was futile. Now, KTEL brings you the new fold-away dish rack, the Space Saver. It was snake oil, polished up and broadcast for the 20th century. Whips, mixes, and beats. And we, the TV-loving public, were very open to being sold. Sir, and the game is on. In the beginning, their product line was mostly gadgets. Gadget is an industry term, which by definition means something you won't ever actually use. Price point was very important. It was always... $199, $299, $399. Never four dollars. Never four oh five. You know, a guy paid two bucks for him or three bucks for him. They know how the hell I'm not gonna get it back. You know. Only $299. Unique spring action teeth penetrate the meat, softening chewy fibers. You save money by using less expensive meat cuts. Confident they'll be tender and mmm, mmm, so delicious. Tender and Regardless of how much they were used or not. KTEL successfully sold millions of products around the world. Some removed lint, others removed clutter. Does your tape collection look like this? One helped consumers create hazardous collections of lip-splitting barware from otherwise harmless bottles. Look what you can make, and it saves money too. Eventually, KTEL would provide the ultimate service to humanity by packaging up collections of songs on single albums at discount prices. These were known as compilations. Now, cramming 24 songs on one record may seem like a noble idea, except here, too, they were sneaky. They'd fade the songs out early and use cheap vinyl, which, of course, reduced the quality of the original recordings. You know, the audiophile would say, oh, that was a, you know, a, you know, a terrible sin against the empire. But in reality, the consumer who was buying from their, this LP with 24 hits on it at Kmart was pretty happy that they had gotten this much music on that disc. If sales were any indication, then consumers were delirious. The estimates vary, but conservatively, between the late 60s and mid-80s, KTEL would sell half a billion records around the world. So how did this whole crazy thing start? Well, the brains of the operation was Philip Kivas, a big strapping farm lad from Saskatchewan. Phil knew what it was to be poor, but from the very beginning had learned that hard work and the occasional scam could see a person through. You know, when I went to school, I was a, when I was a kid, about seven, eight years old, our municipality where we were living in, it used to pay the kids a penny a tail if we do away with the gophers. And I used to then start cutting the tails in half a certain way, and all of a sudden I was getting, I was making 25 or 30 cents a week instead of instead of 10 or 15 cents. Bigger things were around the corner when Phil moved to Winnipeg in the mid-1950s. He had family in the city's north end, and he hustled to earn his keep by driving cabs. One day, 
he scoured the classified ads for something new, something bigger, something stainless. I, I quit, quit driving taxi and I went selling cookware. And I couldn't make a sale for all my money in the world. You know, it was tough going. I felt so sorry for the people. You know, they never had any money, you know, and I was knocking and I wasn't the best to knock on doors anyhow. However, it took me about four or five months and I clicked. And suddenly I got a, I got a hang of it and I started working the country parts. And I, I could communicate with the farmers very well. And I started making some serious money. I went out and bought myself a Cadillac convertible, and I was flying high in those days. And here I was, pulling into a farmer's yard with a, with a white Cadillac convertible, trying to sell him something. I say, the boss lent me his car for the day. It was classic Kivas. Make an impression, make the sale, and get paid. Soon he was running a crew of salesmen throughout the prairies that included his brother Teddy and cousin Ray. They hit the country fairs and carnivals where they'd hawk a growing line of cookware and knives to customers who'd flock to see the demonstrations. If you looked over your crowd, you could quickly see who was a buyer and who wasn't a buyer. And you, you had to be very careful. If you had a woman who had to, with three, four kids, naturally, they'd always come to the front. They'd be the first ones to come to the front. And when you'd ask for money, they're the first ones to leave and, and they tear and they pull the crowd apart. You kind of move them around the side of the table and say, look, I got something for you kids, just around the side of the table, and I give them a carrot stick or something like that and say, hey, it's good for your eyes, eat carrots here. And I, I'd watch the crowd, play the crowd, and if I'd see there was a couple whispering to each other or talking about it, I says, come on in forward, just take a step at a time, and we call it walking, move in, move in, move in. And then we, when we come to the close of it, I'd say, thank you, thank you, ma'am, Hold, just hang, hold on to your money. Even there was no money there. There, were, there was no money there at all. But they'd all look over their shoulders. Well, yeah, thank you, lady. Just hold on to your money. I got more. I want to show you more. Soon as somebody came up with some money, I could see them. They were coming up with some money. I said, thank you, lady. There's one for you. Now let me package all this up for you. There's one other one for over there. Even though there was nobody there. But this is how I got them interested. And before you know, if you get one, two going, and then they all fall into line. This ability to read crowds and convert lookers into buyers was Phil's strength. He added more products and more demonstrations, the most bizarre of which was surely handwriting analysis. The Kivas has bought punch card machines, typed up a bunch of cards filled with fortune cookie wisdom, and charged people 50 cents so these impressive looking units could analyze their signature or predict their future. Everybody left happy, having confirmed what was already suspected that they were talented lovers, born leaders, or destined for greatness. The Kivas has chased the fair and carnival circuits south through the Midwestern states, and Philip eventually wound up on the boardwalk of Atlantic City. This was the major league for Carney. Well, of course, when I got to the boardwalk in Atlantic City, I thought I knew it all, but that's when I really got an education. Uh, and there's a different element of people out there. You're selling to people out of, out of New York, out of New Jersey, and they're tough. If I didn't produce, there were 10 people behind me who weren't ready to take my spots. A new product, the world's first non-stick fry pan, had become a hot seller on the boardwalk. Philip began hatching a plan to take his non-stick shtick back home to Canada. He wanted to put this particular product on television. Well, the problem was, and I didn't know this at the time, I didn't know this at the time, but Philip didn't have the money to be able to buy the TV time. Well, what he did was he took the order that I had written for $70,000 worth of non-stick fry pans and borrowed the money from the bank based on the actual Eaton's order that I had given to him. It was more classic Kivas. Armed only with an order from the department store, he parlayed it into cash for both the product and the commercial airtime. And I made my first live TV spot on a non-stick fry pan. It was a five minute spot, by the way. And it wasn't done anywhere in the world that I know of. And 
20 minutes later or half an hour later, he'd run down to Eaton's and stand in line and wait for the people to come and buy them. It was unbelievable. It was an unbelievable time. The orders just started to flowing in on, in, our in, our, in our telephone room. Uh, the customers would phone from their homes, have seen the item on TV, and would purchase it over the telephone, and then we would deliver it to them. It was frying pandemonium as Eaton started selling thousands and thousands of Phil's First as seen on TV product. It was also that eureka moment when Phil Kivis stood back and realized that his hard sell, carny style demonstration could connect with a large television audience. It was beautiful. It was an epiphany. It was a disaster. The only, there's only one problem with the fry pan. It was a new fry pan that just came out those days and the Teflon spear, Teflon all peeled off. We sold 15,000 Winnipeg and we got back about 20,000. And I'll never forget teeth and trucks backing up and just dumping the fry pans into the garage. You know, in those days, there were a lot of, there were a lot of fried eggs that were Teflon coated. It didn't matter. The farm kid slash Carney Barker was literally rewriting the rules of advertising. Despite the setback, Phil Kivas had seen the future, and the future was on TV. The blades of these knives are made out of surgical stainless steel. That's the finest stainless steel that money can buy. There's certain guys that stand out uh, in, the, in the crowd. They're a little odd, they're a little eccentric. You think he's kind of nuts. Have you ever seen a knife like this before? Uh, but suddenly an infomercial comes out and everybody's buying it. And then everyone in Australia is buying it. You hear all these rumors, this guy's gone with this little thing and made a million dollars. And by the way, he's now made ten million dollars. And you go, wow. Don't I know this guy? By the mid-60s, Phil Kivas was the uncrowned king of the airwaves, hawking a steady stream of products designed to enrich the life of the common man. Three interchangeable attachments work wonders. The company was becoming a haven for Kivas family members, as cousins, uncles, nephews, and otherwise were drawn to Phil's barnstorming brand of TV advertising. Phil Kivas, the consummate negotiator, he could sit down and uh, sell you almost anything. In the first one or two paragraphs, I tell them what I'm selling. I don't keep them guessing. Tell them what you're selling. Introducing Luster 7, the revolutionary new cleaning and polishing spray from KTEL. And then you go into your demonstration. Don't keep them guessing. First, simply spray on. Then wipe and let dry. Finally, buff with a soft cloth. Imagine, no water, no soap, no mess. He once told me about the golden rule of business. The golden rule of business is, he who has the gold rules. You must remember, a good product makes a good commercial, and a good commercial sells.